having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein and this is Vehicle Virgins. Today, we are headed to the LA Auto Show. Now, normally I would go during the press days to get a sneak preview, but life didn't work out that way. I was busy, so we're gonna go during the public days with all of you guys to show everyone who's not able to go to the LA Auto Show what it's actually like to attend. We've got so many new offerings from a bunch of different auto manufacturers. I can't wait to show you guys from the new 911 to the Jeep Gladiator to the new BMW Z4. There is so much in store. And also, we got new merchandise, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, the Vehicle Virgin store is now online. ShopVV.TV. We've got three designs. This awesome retro look with the piston and vehicle versions. I love this shirt. It's available in black and white. Then we've got an awesome tachometer shirt and an instrument style shirt. It's a little more simplistic, but I hope you guys love the designs as much as I do. We spent tireless, tireless, countless hours creating these shirts. They are so comfortable, survive a million washes, and they are now for sale. ShopVV.TV. Seriously, guys, every purchase helps support the channel, and it'd be really cool to be walking down the street and see you guys wearing Vehicle Virgin's merchandise, especially at car shows. Also a good talking point. Let's say we're at the LA Auto Show, you see another person wearing a Vehicle Virgin shirt, well, go up to them and say hi. You know they're likely into cars. Well, you likely into cars. They're obviously into cars. Anyways, let's hit the road. We're taking the Raptor. Let's go to LA. Look at that, we got a new G-Wagon. Don't see too many of those. It's fun to be driving out here. I actually don't make it to downtown LA often enough. I also really wanna visit the Peterson Museum and do some filming on that. Now I'm really curious to see, because we are in between the press days and the public days, this is the first public day, but it's a Friday during work hours. I'm curious to see how many people are actually there. Now I'm not gonna be surprised if there are a ton of people, and I love actually when there are a ton of people because it just goes to show how many of you guys are out there that love cars and just want to see the latest and greatest from each auto manufacturer. And there is the convention center, GT3 in the parking lot. Look at that, BMW M stripes on a Mazda right next to a beautiful M3. Another new G-Wagon, very official. Beautiful Turbo S Cabriolet. It's unbelievable. The parking garage is already a car show and one of the greatest releases of the entire show is the new generation 911. I can't wait to see that. We are in the garage of the auto show right now next to this Vander Hall, which is a really, really unique kind of open wheeled style caterum, aerial atom. I saw this at Pebble Beach Car Week and I really wanna do a review of it. I think it looks awesome. What do you guys think? Look at that, the headlights are actually behind the grill. That is sick. Look at that E36 wide bodied and lowered. These guys killed it on this lowered E92. I have never seen one in this color and it does the car justice. And then we got a boat for who knows what reason. All right, this Liberty Walk Huracan looks absolutely badass. Look how low this thing is next to almost an even cooler looking Liberty Walk Aventador. Look at the hood on that. All right, that's actually a sick looking BMW i8. See, this is why I love auto shows. You never know what you're going to see. This looks like it started life as a 997-911 and look what they've done with it. I freaking love it. All right, I am really stoked that we went to the garage area. We we're almost going to skip this. This is the coolest NSX I have ever seen in my entire life. Look at that. I can't say I ever thought I would see a wide-bodied Liberty Walk NSX, but it looks so good. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> the junior driving experience. Now it is time to head into the main showroom and check out all the latest offerings from our favorite auto manufacturers. Here we go. Pretty 
pretty cool new concept from Infinity. Reminds me a lot of the Sterling Moss as well as the new Ferrari SP1. Single seater, no real windshield. Looks nice. I hope they build this. Never will. Look at this, the new AMG GT four door. One of the coolest releases at the auto show is Mercedes' new AMG GTR Pro. Now you guys know I'm a huge fan of the AMG GTR, but they have taken it up to another level. Come around to the front, the majority of the upgrades have to do with the aerodynamics, the suspension, and the interior. It's got the same four liter twin turbo V8, making 577 horsepower, but this car has gotten a heck of a lot faster around the Nürburgring. In the front, we've got awesome new carbon fiber dive planes that you can see. The front splitter has been completely redesigned, held on by these two metal stanchions. And then one of my favorite elements of any car, fender vents. The fender vents help air escape from the wheel arches, reducing lift, helping with front corner grip. Now, the car's suspension system is the biggest change. It's been completely overhauled. It's manually adjustable and you can do so without the use of any tools. Mercedes says it's about the same suspension setup off of the GT4 race car. The carbon ceramic brakes that were optional on the AMG GTR are now standard on the Pro. All of that together results in a Nürburgring time of seven minutes, 4.6 seconds. The interior receives a host of upgrades as well. We've got the steering wheel off of the AMG GT four door as well as a larger infotainment screen. So same engine, new aerodynamics, much faster and I think it looks absolutely epic. If you get it in selenite gray magna which is the same color as my E63, the color featured here, it comes standard with a green stripe which I think looks fantastic. All the rest of the colors come standard with a gray stripe. Honestly, in pictures and likely in this video, it's hard to tell the difference between the AMG GTR Pro and the standard one, but in person, the slight changes with the dive planes and the fender vents and the rear wing is slightly different as is the element where it attaches to the double rear diffuser adds together in a much more aggressive way, which is crazy to think because the AMG GTR is very impressive, but damn, that looks good. Behind me is the new M5 Competition, a car I very much need to review. Standard M5 made 600 horsepower. This gets a power bump up to 617. The suspension's reworked, it's 0.3 inches lower. But one thing I noticed on this is all of the individual carbon fiber options that weren't available on the standard M5. It's also got a sports exhaust. Look at how cool the exhaust tip actually looks. And this individual red color is gorgeous. One of BMW's releases for the LA Auto Show is the new Z4. This is the Z4 M40i that is a three liter twin turbocharged inline six making 382 horsepower. But what's most notable is all of the exterior changes from the previous generation. I think it makes it a lot more masculine looking. One of my favorite components of the new Z4 is this new side vent. And then we come around the front of the car. The front fascia looks very similar to the 8 series in a way. This is actually the first Z4 that I really like the way it looks. Now the Z4 doesn't get enough, I don't know, recognition. It's actually a fun car to drive, but because it looked a little bit feminine in the past, I think people kind of disregarded it. But maybe with the new generation, they'll knock it out of the park. This is my first time seeing the 8 Series in person where I can actually climb inside. This is the 850i and the 850i convertible. 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 making 530 horsepower. 
think the design language, they absolutely knocked it out of the park. Kind of reminds me of how striking the new 6 Series was, but they've taken it to an entirely another level. And finally, they have a pseudo competitor to the S-Class Coupe. I can't wait to see when the M8 comes into play. Let's go ahead and check out the interior. Look at this crystal see-through shifter. That is wild. We've got an entirely new digital display for the front dash. Looks beautiful. Feels really nice in here. Visibility is somewhat limited because of its coupe styling, but man, this is a nice place to be. The only thing I can see is the rear seat legroom looks as negligible as it can get. There is no way you are fitting back there. BMW also released the new X7 and X5. The X5s are hitting dealerships now, and I need to get behind the wheel of one for a review. I'm still not sure if I'm in love with the looks of the X7. This front grille is, well, it's enormous and very square, but the headlights are gorgeous. And while it's locked, we took a peek at the interior, and it looks stunning. Look at this thing. I know your Raptor is good at off-roading, but I think in the snow, this might have you beat. Alex just told me they actually set this up almost like a wakeboarding boat, but for skiing. As you can see, there's skis on the back and you can get towed behind this with tractor treads. New ZR1, loved reviewing this car. All right, that is awesome. Beetle rally car. Wow. Electric race car from Volkswagen. I believe this is the Pikes Peak world record holder. Goes to show that electric powered vehicles can be extremely fast even on track. Just look at the way it's put together. That wing is enormous. That actually has to be one of the biggest wings I have ever seen on any car. Wow, I actually really like the headlights on the new Mazda 3. Oh look, finally, the new Supra. Look at that, Toyota bringing the heat with the Corolla hatchback race car. That looks sick, wide body. Unfortunately, there is no new Supra reveal yet. That is coming January 14th at the Detroit Auto Show after, well, far too long. They should have unveiled it already, to be honest. Another incredible car that will never exist, but looks incredibly cool in concept form. Look at those seats. I love the floating center console. So Genesis has broken off from Hyundai to try to boost their brand reputation. And recently they have been coming out with some killer models. Right here we have the G70 which is only $50,000. And then to the left of it, we've got the G80 at 55 grand. I wanna check out the interiors. I think guys, if you remove the Genesis name and you just put a Mercedes or a BMW emblem on the front of these cars, they're actually striking. I'm in love with that front grille. The interior in these is nice as well. Quilted leather seats and it comes stock on Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, something that a lot of high-end cars don't do is pay attention to good rubber. Genesis is doing good things. Behind me is the current generation Audi R8 V10 Plus. I find it interesting. I saw pictures relatively recently of the facelifted version of the new R8, but they dropped it almost so silently it was like it was a rendering, but I'm excited to see the new generation of R8 hit the streets. The front is even more aggressive than before. They did a wicked job with it. Now we are on the hunt for one of the most important reveals of the entire show, the 992 generation Porsche 911. I can't wait to see this thing in person. And there it is, the 992. Just kidding. The world's coolest Kia Forte. Look at that. Oh my God. I would buy a Forte if it looked like that. Beautiful Heritage Edition Ford GT. 
love the golf livery. Along with all the major manufacturers that you're used to typically seeing, there's always a couple new manufacturers that you haven't heard of that offer some pretty cool stuff. One of which is Rivian that has these all electric trucks. Check these things out. Here is their SUV version. That is awesome. Because it's all electric, you've also got a massive storage compartment in the front as well. Up there, it shows the battery pack as well as the motors. This thing is really cool. Look at that, zero to 60 in three seconds with a 400 mile range. 200 horsepower at each wheel. Speaking of trucks, Jeep just released their first truck in 25 years. Let's go check that out. Behind me is one of the coolest new releases at the LA Auto Show, the Jeep Gladiator. This is actually the truck version of the Wrangler. A truck is something that's been missing in the Jeep lineup for over 25 years. So it's got the off-road prowess of a Wrangler. It looks incredibly cool. It's 19.1 inches longer and it's got a completely custom revamped rear suspension so it's more comfortable on the road as well. It's got a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 making 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque and it comes standard in a manual. But I think the thing they killed it most with is the looks. Look how aggressive the front bumper is, the new updated headlights, and just the wheel arches. And I love the fact that with most Wranglers and vehicles of this type, you can take the doors off. They even have it featured with the windshield removed. This thing can wade through 30 inches of water. That is awesome. The Gladiator looks so rugged. This thing goes on sale in early 2019. I love it. Alex has infinite headroom because the roof is removable. That is awesome. <laughs> the interior of the new Gladiator is nice as well. Go ahead and hop in. All right, I am really liking this thing. Over the hood, it feels really compact, like you know exactly where the edges of the car are. And the fact that you can remove the roof, it's so sick. Look at that Santa sleigh. Red Eye Express. Oh, that's sick. Chrysler Pacifica looking mean. Well, we have found the Porsche section. They have their entire own hall to themselves. How Porsche is that? Wow. The Porsche GT2 Club Sport. Track only. Look how amazing this looks. This is a perfect segue leading up to the 992 generation of Porsche. They've got models for all eight generations of the 911, all the way from the F model to the new one. Funny enough, I actually didn't know that the models before the 964 were called the F and the G. What? That is awesome. One of the most important reveals for the LA Auto Show and the one I was most excited about seeing is the new generation Porsche 911. Funny enough, a couple months ago, actually about a year ago when I was in Germany taking delivery of my E63, I actually got to take a sneak peek at the new gen car on the assembly line. It's the eighth generation of the 911 and it is dubbed the 992. In fact, it only shares 20% of its parts with the 991. The car is about an inch longer and it is much, much wider as a standard vehicle. Design inspiration was actually based on the original Porsche Turbo, the 930. 
Porsche wanted a car with large fender flares to make it look more aggressive. The standard car is the same width as the all-wheel drive one. It's got a 45 millimeter wider track at the front and 44 millimeter wider track at the rear. Now the wheels are actually bigger than ever before. They come standard as 20s in the front and 21s in the back. A large change in the 911 is in its transmission. It's still called the PDK, but now it has eight speeds instead of seven. That's right, eight speeds. It's now standard instead of a $3,000 option, but what's really interesting is it comes with a big hole in the center of it. And that is for, in the future, they're saying not anytime soon, a hybrid powertrain in a 911. The good news is, partially thanks to the US market, a seven-speed manual transmission is still available at a no-cost option. It's bundled together with the sports chrono package. The engine is very much similar to the 991 generation. It is a three-liter twin-turbocharged flat six only this time it has different turbos, different intercoolers, and different injectors. That's good for 23 additional horsepower, leading the total for the Carrera S to 443 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. Acceleration figures are as impressive as ever. When equipped with the optional sports chrono package, the Carrera S does zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds, and the 4S does it in 3.2. That's unbelievable. Now let's look at the rear end of the car. This is the most distinct change from the previous generation 911, and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. There's one large integrated light bar that extends all the way from the left side of the car to the right with zero gaps. So at nighttime, when you hit the brake lights, it lights up as one piece. Then below that, we've got new design rear bumper that looks beautiful. Now in the interior, there are some design changes as well. We've got a much bigger 10.9 inch screen that's actually set back into the dashboard. There are also a lot less buttons in the center console so you don't have that typical clutter around the gear shifter. Now, the analog tachometer and speedo has been changed to a more digital layout. Some people aren't gonna like that as much. I think it looks quite nice. Handling wise, steering is now 10% quicker than before. And it's got fancy adaptive suspension that can now change the suspension geometry while the wheels are moving up and down, something it couldn't do before. All told, all of the modifications to the 992 versus the 991 lead to a five second faster Nürburgring time than the previous generation. That is substantial. Now pricing, the two models that they are releasing right now are the S and the 4S. The S starts at $113,300 and the 4S starts at $120,600. I gotta be honest, I haven't been a fan of the Panamera for the longest time, but this GTS Sport Turismo looks fantastic. I can't tell if the ride height has been altered for the display model, but it is absolutely tucked in the front and the rear. Porsche does such an amazing job at modernizing each edition of the 911 in the slightest way. They're improving upon perfection. I think, well, we can't really distinguish too many differences between the 992 and the 991 now. When you see one in about three years, it's amazing how dated the 991 is likely going to look. Regardless, they knocked it out of the park. The new larger wheels, the larger haunches look epic. What is that? Geometrical war crime. <laughs> wow. It's the Carlman King. What on earth? The rear quarter panel in the back actually looks kind of like a Lamborghini Urus. This is pretty cool. Behind me is the Genovation Corvette. It is an all electric Corvette that is capable of doing zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. But what's more impressive than that is we know electric cars can accelerate fast. The top speed is over 220 miles an hour quite like the carbon fiber wheels too. Wait, look at that. It can come in a manual as an all electric car. What on earth? Back at home now.
now, what an awesome day out at the LA Auto Show. Going on Fridays, quick tip, is an awesome day to go if you can make it during work hours because there's nowhere near as many people. But for the next couple of days, you can hit up the LA Auto Show and I highly recommend doing it. Seeing the Jeep Gladiator, the new Z4, the M5 competition package, the 992-911, I really like the way that car looks, was a total blast. If you guys haven't yet, cop some Vehicle Virgins merchandise, shopvv.tv. Seriously, every purchase helps support the channel, and I think the designs are pretty dope, and they are seriously super comfortable, awesome materials, and they fit just right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.